Good afternoon. Thank you for joining me once again. And it's a pleasure to have you here, and we will uh, endeavor to extract life principles from the Bible for our daily lives. We've been talking about the proceeding word and the word that Jesus says, I speak to you, they are spirit and life. And we've been looking at the parable of the sower and trying to get the best from these four groups, what they tell us and what Jesus is trying to tell us in, in that. <clears throat> and we're talking about receiving proceeding word, keeping it, having it, bringing fruit, and our role to play as hearers or listeners, receivers of the proceeding word, in the process of uh, bringing, it to bringing the fruit to maturity. And we saw that the three groups before the last teach us the following. You have to keep the word that you hear. You have to keep the word that you hear. And the second one is sometimes you have to add certain things. And the third one, sometimes you have to remove certain things. And uh, we said that the fourth group... Um, might be a combination, bringing the nature of Christ uh, or producing the nature of Christ in and through us uh, might take a combination of all three of these. And then um, we talked about the work that has to be done by, by the hearer <coughs> if he wants to have the result of the last group. Jesus calls it patience and endurance. That's a task, the work, the responsibility of the hearer. And then we started with the last group, and we read Luke 8 verse 15, and I'm just going to touch on that again. The seeds that were planted on good ground are people who also hear the word, but they keep it in their good and honest heart and produce what is good, despite what life may bring. We ended with this, where... Jesus says, uh, the secret here is these people <coughs> keep it in their good and honest heart. So they make preparations to have the word and to keep it. It's not that they mix the word and just throw it in with all the rest and become lukewarm, a bit of warm and a bit of cold, warm which is the word and cold which is their worries and other things. Uh, and then eventually they you know, they go from lukewarm to being spewed out of the mouth of God because they bring no fruit to maturity. But these people prepare their hearts and they keep the word and they cultivate the soil and they produce what is good. This is now what Jesus says. They produce what is good despite what life may bring them. And we started with this last week, that um, life can throw, throw a curveball at you. Life can bring many things. You know, in, 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 if you listen to <coughs> people's stories <coughs> about the last two years, about COVID and the effects and the loved ones they've lost and the uncertainty in which they live, um, if, you, if you look at that, uh, despite that, despite what life may bring them, so despite of all these things, there are still people bringing fruit to maturity, yielding a crop. Uh, the, the outside world, the, the circumstances could not derail them because they have set their heart on producing fruit and bringing Christ, the nature of Christ in and through them, bringing that to the fore. They've set their hearts on that. They are steady. You'll see some other words later. They are steady in their commitment. <clears throat> so, Anything can rage outside their boat. Anything can go on outside their lives. Uh, it can really be stormy times. Uh, there can be hurricanes, anything. But they have decided, I'm going to walk with Jesus. And those people, you know, those people are, are the ones who have learned to take whatever life throws at them and to change that to their good to change that so that it will bless them and help them on their way to uh, maturity in Christ. 
They will not let that derail them. Rather, they would use it to propel them. It's not going to stop them. It's not going to slow them down. It's not going to derail them. It will propel them eventually for their own good. All things work together for good. If we can learn these secrets, then nothing, nothing can really affect us to lose our faith in God. As long as that is the most important thing. We can handle anything outside of that. You won't be tempted above your powers. It's, God will not allow it. Anything can be thrown at you. Um, you know, I, I sometimes cry when I see how easily children of God are derailed. How easily circumstances um, hinder their faith and dilute their faith. And they become weak in God and eventually they go away from God. Um, circumstances, it's it, it's such a major thing in, in our lives today. But there are people, Jesus says this, uh, they keep it in their good and honest hearts and produce what is good despite what life may bring. Now there's another translation of this that says, and those in the good earth are those who, having given ear to the word, keep it with a good and true heart and in quiet strength give fruit. In quiet strength. There's a quiet strength in which they bear fruit. A quiet strength. A strength. In other words, um, th there's one verse in Isaiah where it says they will be rooted downward and... Um, they will bear fruit upwards like a tree. Uh, and, and this is these people. In quiet strength, they bear fruit. They're not on the, on, the, on the hilltops and on the tops of buildings crying out, listen, look what, look what good life I have or whatever. In quiet strength, there's a strength of commitment. And in that, they bear fruit. It's a wonderful, wonderful kind of a life that these people live, and they bring fruit to maturity. Unfortunately, it's not the masses. Unfortunately, it's not the majority. I wish it was, but it's not going to be that way. So these people have a certain action. They keep the word that they hear in their hearts, which have been prepared with certain characteristics. And from this word in their hearts, they produce fruit. From the word in their hearts, they produce fruit. What is the fruit? The character and the nature of Christ. From the word, cultivating the word in their lives. And I'll show you just now what the word says about certain people in, in the book of Acts. From the, the word in their heart, they produce fruit. They produce fruit. Now, they surely go through the same things as other people, like the devil coming to steal, temptation, testing, all the other groups. Think of all four groups now. They go through the same things. And the worries of the world. The devil coming to steal, trying to steal, temptation, testing, the worries of the world. Same, all of these. But they are determined to let the word accomplish what God intended for it to do when he sent it to them. So they are like the people of Isaiah 55. They are determined to let the word be fruitful in that for which it was sent. They want to give fruit to the word and let the word uh, obey its fruit and reach its target through them. So what, if, what is the difference between them and the other groups? I think, I think it is a steadfast decision, the, the steadfast decision to please God and grow in Him. The difference is the steadfast decision to please God and grow in Him. You know, we've, through the years, we've sung songs like, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, praise the Lord, no turning back. And we sing, uh, I've got a made up mind and all of these nice songs. But when life throws the things at people that it does, then you see whether it was just singing or whether it was singing from their life story. 
So I think the difference is their steadfast decision to please God and to grow in Him. They take what the Word says and they let it change their lives and they give priority to the Word and don't mix it with other things in their lives which they don't want to surrender or let go of. They haven't got agendas and things that they're not willing to let go of and they keep that, but the Word can still have a place. No, no. They don't have those things in their life. They take the Word, take what the Word says, and they let it change their lives. And they give priority to the Word. They don't mix it. They give priority to the Word. Now, in the lot of things said before, let's just look at a few other things about the actions of these people. Um, the, this last group. In the light of things that we have said, let's just look at this. Um, they wanted the proceeding word, not for the sake of revelation. I'm just recapturing now and putting it in the sense of these people, things that we've said. They wanted the proceeding word, not for the sake of revelation, but they desired <coughs> that it should change them. They wanted the proceeding word, not for the sake of revelation, but they desired that it should change them so that they can come to the full stature of Christ and that the Word could do that for which God had sent it. That's a desire you need to have. They desire that it should change them. You want, you need to want to change so that they can come to the full stature of Christ. Full stature, that must be your desire in this world. To come to the full stature of Christ and that the Word could do that for which God had sent it. We must be the vessels that give place to the Word to reach its destiny and its purpose. When God says, it will not return to me void, we must say, okay God, let it do its work in me. Let your kingdom, let your... Come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In other words, let your kingdom come, and then it asks for his will to be done. So you say, okay, God, here is the vessel that will do your will. Here is the vessel that will do your will. In that way, we are going to bring forth the stature of Christ. That's the way we are going to present him in this earth and bring forth his stature in this world. So this last group, Keep the word in a good and noble heart. I want you to, to look at this. This last group. Keep the word in a good and noble heart. The heart was conditioned and the word was received and the word was kept. The heart was conditioned beforehand. The word was received and the word was kept. Now we can ask questions about all of these things. How do you condition the heart? We've spoken a bit about that. How do you receive the word? And how do you keep the word? You know, it's amazing that when you sit in church, that's not the place where you keep the word. That's the place where you receive the word. Let's say you're sitting now under a um, proceeding word like in a church. The 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 sitting there <coughs> in the place where it is brought to you, where it is delivered, where it is preached, sitting there is not keeping the word. Keeping is what happens afterwards when you leave the place. But sitting there is receiving. Now, it's amazing to me when I see this picture and I think of this, that in a church, say there are 200 people sitting in a church, they, this is the place of reception now. This is the place of reception. Now why, let's say we're talking about figures now as Jesus taught. Uh, let's just use this as an example. Of the 200 sitting there, 50 of them, 50, or let's say there are 100 people in church, there are 100 people. Of those 100 sitting in church who came to church today, they uh, somehow they got up early and maybe they didn't like it very much, but they felt they had to go and 
this guy's friend was going to be there and he's going to ask him where, why weren't you there? Whatever, whatever reasons, 100 people came to church. So now they are sitting there receiving the word. According to the stats of Jesus, and I'm just using it as an example, 25 of those 100 people receive the word in the sense that that word is eventually going to bear fruit. While sitting there under the same word, it's amazing to think of this. This just blows my mind. That while the word goes out, <coughs> in that audience, there are different reactions to the very same word. Different reactions to the very same word. Um, 25%, 25 people um, will go on with that word and that word will bear fruit in them. 75 of those 100 people came to church in vain. 75% of the 100 people came to church in vain. 25% will go out and they will e won't even bother. Immediately the devil will come and take the word away and he won't even remember he was in church. <laughs> or maybe he'll remember he was in church, but he won't remember what was said. He just doesn't care. Then of the next 50, 25% of them uh, have got rocky soil and they've got... Uh, They've got love for the pleasures of life and other things, which is more important to them. So, so 25 of the 100 people sitting there in church, in church, have got other things in their heart, which is more important to them. And another 25 as well. They've got things like the worries of the world. They want to take care of other things. They're not interested. So 50 of those 100 50 of those 100 will go out there. They've heard the word. They want it. They maybe had an emotional experience. They might have cried. And they might have come out for an invitation or whatever you did. But nothing will endure in the long run. Nothing will come of it over time. As time goes on, nothing will come of that. That's... Oh, that's scary. That really blows my mind. I just, uh, it's so weird to think of it. It's so sad, actually, that 75 people out of the 100, nothing will endure. Nothing will live long for over time. But 25, 25 of those people, they came with prepared hearts. They said, I am going, whatever they call it, you can call it what you want, I don't care. They I'm going to the house of God. I'm going to the church. I'm going, you know, people are so upset about the word church today. Now, I, I don't care what you, you can call it anything. But they came and they said, I'm going to my family, my spiritual family today. And I'm going to the place where the proceeding word is given by God to me. I'm going to that place. And now I'm going to prepare my heart. I'm going to prepare my heart so that nothing will stand in the way of me receiving it. And then I have to keep it, and over time with perseverance and patience, I have to bear fruit. I'm going to that place where I can receive the word. So what do they do from the start? They take away the things that can hinder them from receiving. How many times before a service we have quarrels and uh, in, in a house or whatever. And for the simplest of reasons, you can't believe why something and about what some quarrel can just jump up. And later on, you have to laugh about it. It's so silly. But in that moment, why? Because, because somebody wants to hinder you from receiving. Somebody wants to hinder you from receiving. So now when you go, 25% of those people will say, listen, I'm not going to let anything hinder me from receiving. I'm not going to let anything stand in my way. I am going to the place where my family gathers 
And that's a place where we will receive the proceeding word. You know, some people come with this thing of, why do we still go to church? We can, uh, all of, you know, and they, they're fighting everything. They're fighting the system. They, uh, but what about saying, I'm going to the place where my family gathers and where we gather to receive the proceeding word. We don't gather to praise and worship, number one. We don't gather to do other things, primarily. We gather to receive proceeding word primarily because we want to bring forth the nature of Christ. Ever thought about that? That's a good definition for going to church or going to, <laughs> call it what you want. You know, I, sometimes I can't believe that people, that people can hassle and fight over things which are really irrelevant. Irrelevant. It's about going to receive the proceeding word. That's what it's about. Whether you call it the church or you call it the... You can call it what you want. So we're going, these 25 people say, I am going to the place where my family gathers, my spiritual family. We will be gathering around the word. We will be proceeding, uh, receiving proceeding word which will be able to change us and bring about over time with patience the nature of Christ. So what I have to do is first I have to check my heart. I have to prepare my heart. And then secondly, I have to receive. I have to receive. And thirdly, I have to keep it. I have to keep it. Let nothing steal it from me. I have to keep it. So beforehand, there can be an enemy that wants to take it. And even afterwards, there can be an enemy that wants to take it. But that's my role as a receiver of the word. I want this word to come to fruition. I want it to bear mature fruit. So that is where I'm going. Now, as the hundreds sit there, now it's the process of receiving. Receiving. So I came in, let's say, let's say all of the hundred people prepared their hearts. They prepared their hearts and they really came with a clean heart, with a heart ready to receive from God. All of them on the same page. Now they sit there, now it's receiving time. Okay, now let's look at all the differences. Of receiving. And I want to, to, to uh, give you these things so that you can check on this whenever you go to the gathering again. It's about the rece reception. Now, you know, somebody said one day that um, a reception uh, is, is based on uh, perception. Reception is based on perception. Now, I'll, I'll bring that in now. I'll talk about that now. So you're sitting there, and let's say you look at the channel speaking, the pastor or whoever it may be speaking. Now, here comes perception. The way you perceive him, perception determines reception. The way you perceive him is what you will receive from him. You know, Jesus came to Nazareth. And Jesus, the word says, just think of this. The word says, Jesus could not do many miracles there because of a spirit of familiarity. Because of a spirit of familiarity. We know this guy. We grew up with him. He's, he's Joseph's son. He's a carpenter boy. He can't be the son of God. We know him. We are his friends. And because of that, Jesus could not imagine anything is possible with the Lord. Anything. But sometimes God lets himself be limited by the issues of man. Sometimes God lets himself be limited by the issues of man. And Jesus was prevented and prohibited from doing 
miracles or many miracles in Nazareth because of the spirit of familiarity. You must guard against these things. You must guard against these things. We must honor grace. We must honor the grace that God has put in our lives to bring to us the proceeding word. You must honor grace. A spirit of familiarity will let you be barren. You won't receive anything from God. Look at the daughter of Saul. And there are many other examples now that I don't want to go into. But that spirit will make you go barren. Spirit of familiarity. Because you cannot see the one who was sent to bring you the word. You cannot see him for whom he is. You cannot estimate him. Evaluate him for who he is. And therefore you close up yourself from receiving the seed. The same as Michael, Saul's daughter. She was closed down from receiving any seed from David because of her attitude toward David and how she saw him. And that's the same with many Christians' lives. The same thing. So, now you ha it's reception time. <laughs> and the hundred people sit there. Now they have to receive. So, they look at the preacher and all many things now jump into place. Spirit of familiarity. This guy, what has he got to say? I saw him yesterday. He was, you know, all of that. And uh, he did that and he did that and he did that to me. And, uh, all, you know, all these things jump into place. Now you have to Take those things out. You have to cultivate. You have to check your heart for reception. Otherwise, you will not receive. You must guard your heart. Now, even in this of receiving, there are many uh, things that can hinder this, that can keep you from receiving. Um, you know, things that come from the past and things that, it's not only about, I'm not saying that about the preacher. Um, you're seeing someone else there or uh, your thoughts wander. You cannot capture your thoughts to the obedience of Christ. And now you sit in church, in church, and you think about things outside. One day I asked her, uh, I was talking to someone um, his wife came to church and he didn't really. So I was visiting there one day and he said to me, he says, Pastor, I'd rather be sitting at the, at the seaside or at the, you call it the fishing waters, longing for the church than to sit in church and longing to be at the fishing waters. Uh, <laughs> so I thought, man, you're quite honest. But so people... Um, People sit there and their thoughts might go. Their thoughts might go. So, so what I'm saying is the reception of the hundred, 25 of them will capture themselves to receive. Just think of it. Every hundred that is there, 75 of them will go out and something happened and they just they received it in a way that uh, they mix it with the rest of their lives. 75 of the 100 was fruitless. Uh, they, just, they just heard it and threw it in there and, uh, well, now, you know, it just, it just has to survive now. It just has to survive. They don't tend to it. They don't anything. The, in, that, in that period, when they received the proceeding word, they did not receive it as they should have. They did not receive it. Only 25 of the 100. They came there and they said, okay, even now while the word is going out, I am going to give it my best attention, my best attitude, the best that I can. So people, if you come to church and it's time for the word, you give it your best attention. Now, I, I, I want to ask you this, and I want to say this. We talk, about, uh, we talk about people whose attention just wanders all of the time. They can't really 
as they say, they're too broke to pay attention or something. But they can't, they can't, the attention can't be focused on one thing. They, you know what I mean? There's, there's a certain uh, illness like that as well. I don't know the English names and all of that. But they have this problem. But you know what? It's much bigger in the church. It's much bigger in the church. The moment somebody moves or something disturbs them, the attention is there. The attention is there. It, it's, it's like a demon in the church. Sorry for the word. I'm not talking about people now. I'm talking about things. And uh, so, so check, check your time of reception. Keep yourself, keep your attention, focus on the word going out. And not the word just going out, but the word coming into you. Focus on that so that you receive it at the best you can. Stop the disturbances around you. Have a respect for the Holy Spirit. You know, I sometimes see, um, I sometimes see people and sometimes even young people at some stage in, in, the, in, the, in the service, they just get up and walk out and they go to the bathroom. And uh, I think and I think by myself, for what reason? You don't need the bathroom. You've just been there 10 minutes ago. I don't know if it's to look on their cell phones or what, what they do, but they just go out. We must start respecting the Holy Spirit because it's reception time it's where the seed is going to be planted into your life. Our time is up. Let's just pray together. Father, I thank you for this time around your word. We ask that your spirit will engraft this word into our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'm glad you were here. May you have a good week.